The AMA's approach focuses on treating the effects of obesity rather than the causes. As your editorial noted, the best approach is one that stresses public health and education in regard to good eating habits and exercise. The last thing the American public needs is the medicalization of yet another everyday problem. Like they've done with everything else. Everything has a syndrome. Well, in the diagnostics, you know, statistical manual of psychiatry, you know, uh, when you, when you uh, protest, expose authority, you have a disease. Yeah, if you disagree with the powers that be, if you have an independent, free-thinking mind, you have a, a, a mental illness. You have you have a syndrome. Correct. That requires more medication, which yes. means the drug companies make more money. Yes. And it goes on and 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 on. Oh, hold on. The stovepipe, the guy. And it goes on and on and on and on, never ending. Every time there's a, uh, every time they look in the uh, in the uh, in the med not in the medical book, every time they they see a human issue. Every time they see a human issue, they they they, they uh, tag a, a syndrome onto it. Becomes a profit. Becomes center. a profit making a disease in the American healthcare system. And it's there's a syndrome attached to every damn thing. Yeah. So they could so they could prescribe more psychiatric medication. <clears throat> the house rejected a five-year, half-trillion-dollar farm bill on Thursday uh. that would have cut two billion dollars annually from the food stamps and let states impose broad new work requirements on those who receive them. Where are they finding these jobs? for the welfare people and the food staff people. Attention Republican Congress and uh, other idiots. other idiots in the uh, Fox News and conservative media. There are no jobs out there. Where are the jobs that they expect welfare recipients to get to perform? Hey, maybe they want us to move to China. Maybe they want they That's want to move, one way of getting rid maybe of they want to move you into a little uh, cubicle, a little cubby hole with a with a hammock. They want you to live at Foxconn, like the people that that practically live and there wear now. And wear a diaper. And, and oh, depends. And work with a an adult diaper on, so you don't have to take bathroom breaks. You can just pee into an adult diaper. And shit. Say the word. Shit too. Yeah. In your diaper. Oh, so so they look at every little minute you're working. <laughs> of course. <laughs> productivity, productivity, productivity. Do, 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 do. Those cuts were not deep enough for many Republicans who objected to the cost of nearly eighty billion dollars a year food stamp program. which has doubled in the past five years. A uh, duh! In the last five years, we came out of the big financial meltdown, which benefited Wall Street at the expense of Main Street. Uh, yeah. The vote was 234 to 195 against the bill, with 62 Republicans voting against it. The bill also suffered from lack of Democratic support necessary for the traditionally bipartisan farm bill to pass. Only 24 Democrats voted in favor of the legislation after many said the food stamp cuts 
could remove as many as two million needy recipients from the roads. The addition of the optional state work requirements by Republican amendment just before final passage cost many remaining Democratic votes. Majority Leader Eric Cantor, Republican of Virginia, scumbag, scumbag number one. Well, actually, he's number two. Paul Ryan and is number one, and uh, John. Actually, John Boehner is number two, and then Cantor is number three. Boehner's been quiet for a while. That's because he can't do nothing because the Tea Party has him like a puppet. Le puppet. He's a puppet. Yeah. A puppet, a marionette. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steny Hoyer of Maryland, both of whom voted for the bill, immediately took to the House floor and blamed the other parties for the defeat. Mm -hmm. Cantor said it was a disappointing day, mm -hmm. that the Democrats had been the disappointing players. I guess it's playing to cut food stamps? It's like a game to Mr. Cantor? Yeah, well, he, he he's not, he doesn't uh, miss too many meals like no. like Chris Christie. He don't miss any meals and I'm sure he eats the best. I'm sure he, he, he eats 100% organic, just like I hear the president and his family eats. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 paying the bills and living a decent, comfortable, clean life is, uh, and getting enough to eat is not an issue with people like Mr. Cantor. Correct. That's why they're out of touch. Yeah. <clears throat> Hoyer suggested that Republicans voted for the food stamp work requirements to tank the bill. What happened today is you turned a bipartisan bill necessary for our farmers. That's not true. Necessary for uh, the big uh, uh, agribusinesses big agri like Cargill, etc. Big agra. Because the little farmer gets crap today. Okay? Necessary for our consumers. Oh yeah, they're really worried about consumers, aren't they? Necessary for the people of America many of us would have supported. And you turned it into a partisan bill, he said. The Senate overwhelmingly passed its version of the farm bill last week mm -hmm. with about 2.4 billion a year in overall cuts and a $400 million, million annual decrease in food stamps. There's no need for a date brace. We need increases. It's small enough. You see, nobody can live on four dollars and fifty cents a day. Cory Booker and uh, the other congresswoman—they're trying it. They can't do it. No, it can't be done. The, the, the food stamps are are, are min uh, microscopic as it is, just like welfare is microscopic. Give me a break. A uh, hundred and forty dollars a month that New Jersey. It gives people, and then New Jersey, the state, when I say state, I mean Chris Christie administration, has the nerve to say, well, some states in the United States don't even have a welfare system. So what does that mean? That yeah, We are not those states like Mississippi and Alabama and Louisiana. So people... They've always been cheap. So people perish. Yeah. So th th then w what's where's the... Uh, What's so wonderful about America if people, if poor people don't have social services in those states? Where's the incentive to... Uh, What's so wonderful about a country that allows poor people to exist? Yeah. And I don't mean to kill them. I mean to... Why wouldn't good Christians think in terms of, you know what? Why don't we give all the money they need to people on welfare and bring them into the middle class? Then they don't need welfare anymore. And then when they you don't think like that. when you put more moolah, when you put more money back in the pockets of mainstream, 
there's more spending that gets put back into the economy. The true consumer is the little guy, not the fat cats. That's you correct. know what I'm saying? You know, I'm so sick of hearing Larry the Cable Guy go on and on and on about America is the best and everything American is the best and America this, America that. That's because Larry the Cable Guy has a you don't look at the results. Has a syndicate. He has a syndicated. He's got a show. He's on, on Fox, right? On. Was he? No, no. He's on the. I think it's on the History Channel. So wait a minute. Right. Larry the Cable Guy's got a show on cable, and. Um, but he's right wing. He's from. He's a he's he's a bit of a teabagger because he's always bragging. He's always waving the flag and bragging that America's the best. Everything America made, everything, every concept, me any mental concept from America is the best. Everything that is, that happens in America, was born in America, was created by Americans. That is America is better than the rest of the world. He's constantly bragging. He wears, he dresses like a farmer. He's from um, bib overalls. Yeah, yeah. He wears the same outfit, the flannel with the bib overalls. He he's from Nebraska. He talks with a drawl, with an accent, and he he's kind of, I guess he's kind of like a corporate kissy ass because, you know, he's got this job, and this is Larry the Cable Guy's gimmick. He's, he, he's a very funny comedian, don't get me wrong, but he goes on and on and on, I guess kissing network, corporate ass, and... Uh, well, he doesn't look at the studies. He's a very happy guy. Where in life expectancy in America is way down the bottom. Healthcare is three times as much as any other industrialized country. Right. On and on and on. No, he doesn't. So America is not the best. He doesn't look at these facts, no. Correct. The White House was supportive of the Senate version but had issued a veto threat of the House bill. If the two chambers cannot come together on a bill, farm state lawmakers could push for an extension of the 2008 farm bill that expires in September or negotiate a new bill with the Senate and try again. Some conservatives have suggested separating the farm programs and the food stamps into separate bills. The best way to feed the people of any country, and particularly the United States, how it originally was, was local, organic food produced locally. Support your local farmer, no matter what he produces. Local and small family farms is the way to go like it was in the past. Main Street over Wall Street. But if America was so great, as well, I always contend, like Larry, it would have no poor. Like Larry the Cable Guy keeps on bragging. Hey, America, America. There's hey, America a this, way. America that. Hey, America. Constantly There's a waving simple a flag. There's yeah. a simple difference between the poor and the rich. It's called money. The lack of fun money as far as the poor is concerned yeah and the rich they have it the haves versus the have-nots yeah so if you want to do something and make America great why not get rid of their poor and I don't right. mean killing them and and uh, and saying that uh, people on social services and people that are unemployed are just lazy Instead that's of, the bullshit it, that's been going on for years. That's the Tea Goes Party. Back to Ronald Reagan's welfare queen. She never existed, really, right? Yes, she never did. Yeah, not but every you know. Not everybody's Octomom, you know. In, in politics, yeah, it's not the truth or the fact; it's the perception that becomes truth. How could perception become truth if it's not proven? Because they don't require proof. Because they, because that's their game. You got, you got. That's a game that they create that reality, you got, false reality. You got over a, I guess it's a, over. It got to be over a billion people who call themselves Christians and believe their crap on faith. 
So what the hell do you expect in politics? Crap meaning Facts? they're cult. They're so-called Christian cult. And I was talking to uh, the person uh, managing the God Project segment on the, the Facebook group Hard Hitting Truth. And she says, you have to understand something. So, uh, 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 Zedang from uh, North, a Christian uh, Bible study a student uh, from uh, North uh, Eastern India says that in every religion, whether it be the Hindus, the Muslims, uh, uh, Buddhists, and, and, and definitely with Christians, there are all these sects, these, these uh, different churches, different um, uh, segments of the religion that are cultists, that are not accurate, that do not go by what's in the Bible. And they are like cults, and uh, some of them are just downright wicked, you know. That's because they don't practice what the Bible says. Prove all things, hold fast yeah. that which is good. And, and that all, don't mean faith. And all these cults, all these different sects, these segments of these religions that are negative, they all have one thing in common. They all seem to be power hungry. hungry. They're right wing fundamentalists. They're, um, they all have the same mindset of taking over, power, forcing their crap down your throat. Uh, yeah. Nobody else is good but them. Uh, and lying. And, and lying. <coughs> usually keeping their women as second class citizens. Maybe third class because they're animals. They treat better than the women. That is true. The family dog actually has more rights. Or the oxen. An oxen has more rights in an in a extreme Islamic country than the women do. That is very true. And uh, hey, they got, even India traditionally doesn't give women many rights. You know, they got more rights than, than the Muslim country, but uh, the Indian women are have been really protesting. Yeah, they don't like to be married to somebody they don't love. Yeah, arranged you know? marriages, but in general, oh, women crap from the old country, especially your third, fourth, and fifth world countries, <clears throat> they don't have a lot of rights really compared to the men and uh, you know, and, uh, their, their governments are very totalitarian and, and very fascist. You know, you don't have any, you have the poor and then you have the people hogging all the wealth on top. No middle class, you know, they, they have similarities. Excuse me, but continue reading, but I'll be right back. The letter writer criticizes former U.S. Senator Robert Dole for daring to vent his frustration about current Republican Party shortcomings. Well-respected former Governor Thomas Kane, that's of New Jersey, and many distinguished Republicans share Dole's concerns and disappointments. Some recently called for the GOP to stop behaving like the dumb party. The dole may not be equal to, and at times overglorified, Ronald Reagan, but he speaks from the heart and possesses far more integrity and common sense than the GOP presidential hopefuls in the last election cycle. The lack of a broadly appealing party platform, shifting demographics, increasing Tea Party fatigue among voters, and a repeated lackluster lineup of presidential candidates will once more pose a major hurdle for the GOP in 2016. Governor Christie could make a difference for the GOP. He has repeatedly shown that he is not willing to subject himself to the party's ideological straitjacket. He realizes that the current brand of conservatism is moving increasingly toward an extreme and a regressive position that will not shape 
the future of this country. He also seems to know the value of compromise. But what the GOP tries to do every election cycle is to put new garb on the same old crap. That's right. With so much money wasted in government, with bad decisions, here's one that is easily fixable. New Jersey's Governor Christie insists that a special October election for a Senate seat is best for the state. But with a $12 million price tag, it is very wrong. And that $12 million price tag could go to reinstate the homestead rebate program for the elderly and the disabled. You mean this election he expects to be paid for by the taxpayers? Of course, who else is going to pay for it? Which is the middle class? That's only one not election. Not the rich, yeah. That's the election with Cory Booker. Not the, not the Christie one or the Bono one. That comes a month later. This is a special election. Wait a minute. Does this have to do with the, the passing away of... Um, Mr. Senator Lautenberg. Senator Frank Lautenberg, Senator of New Jersey, and, and, and replacing Senator Frank Lautenberg. Correct. Okay, okay. It's going to cost 12 to 24 million dollars. I'm sure that could reinstate the homestead rebate program for the disabled and the elderly. It's funny how all, the, all this money is there to benefit the people on top of the ladder. But not for the women's health clinic. Planned Parenthood uh, uh, food pantries for the, for the homeless and the poor. Oh no, they get closed. Oh yeah. Uh, anything to benefit uh, the fat cats. What about the, uh, since Chris Christie is stronger than the storm, like, yeah. like the annoying commercial tells you, then how come the, uh, the people that lost their homes near the coast don't feel like they're stronger than the storm because they didn't receive their money yet. And you know they're not going to receive it too because the mortgage holders want the money first yeah. to you pay know, down their mortgage, not to repair their house. Do you know what the... Uh, and it's all legal. Do you know what the insurance company told my brother who lives near Point Pleasant Beach in the town of Brick, New Jersey. My brother Scott, they told him, uh, you have a choice. <coughs> this is, this is post-Sandy, you have a choice. We raise your home insurance to uh, eh, around $2,000 uh, a month, or you uh, physically elevate your home, okay, have the whole house lifted up, which, which would cost- I think it's eight. 11 feet, no? Something like that, Something which, like which that. costs eighty thousand oh. dollars. So, or number three, you try and sell your house, try and sell your house, and you move inland. So, the this is the choice that people living on the coast in New Jersey have, you know. So, as far as New Jersey residents being stronger than the storm, Christie doesn't live on the coast. It's not his problem. Of course he's stronger than the storm. He's not there. Yeah, but they're not stronger than their insurance companies. <laughs> so we have an, uh, this real annoying um, commercial here in New Jersey that uh, where this stupid annoying song that says we're stronger than the storm. And then there's a picture of Chris Christie sitting near the beach with his bloated face saying, we're stronger than the storm. It's, it goes like this. We're stronger than the storm. We're stronger than the storm. Yeah, except the people who lost their homes and are still waiting for their money. I think the private contractors are stronger than the storm. Oh yeah. Because they're getting rich. All the poor homeowners are getting screwed. Okay? To continue, the governor should put any reason for the early election in the garbage yeah. and do what's right for the people. 
His decision diminishes his authority. I could only wish that he would act with more common sense and compassion. I think the only thing uh, Mr. Uh, Governor Christie has compassion for is an eclair. Yeah, eclair or, or a gigantic waffle the size of a manhole cover. <laughs> Chris Christie, in reality, all joking aside, is a piece of shit because, you know, he's the reason why welfare recipients in New Jersey get $140 a month. You, you, even if you lived in a, in a tent or or a treehouse, I don't even think you can buy clothes and and food with $140. We got a how month. many people living in a tent right now in uh, Lakewood? In tents. I don't even think they get 140 hours a month. You know? Yeah. The, the United States foiled a plot to bomb the New York Stock Exchange mm -hmm. because of the sweeping surveillance programs at the heart of a debate over national security and personal privacy, officials said on Tuesday at a rare open hearing on intelligence led by lawmakers sympathetic to spying. Mm -hmm. The House Intelligence Committee hearing provided a venue for officials to defend the once secret programs and did little probing of claims that the collection of people's phone records and internet usage has disrupted dozens of terrorist plots. <laughs> well, they couldn't give uh, because it hasn't happened! Mm -hmm. Army General Keith Alexander, director of the National Security Agency, said the two recently disclosed programs one that gathers U.S. phone records, and another that is designed to track the U.S.-based internet servers by foreigners with possible links to terrorism are critical. Alexander told lawmakers that leaks by Edward Snowden have caused irreversible and significant damage to this nation and undermine the U.S. relationship with allies. Yeah, I'll say it did that because we were spying on the allies. In the days after the leaks, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers cited one attack, he said, was thwarted by the programs. In the comments of other Intelligence officials, that number grew to two, then ten, then dozens, without proof. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On Tuesday, Alexander said more than 50 attacks were averted because of the surveillance. Yeah. These included plots against the New York subway system and a Danish newspaper office that had published cartoon depictions of Mohammed. In a new example, Deputy FBI Director Sean Joyce said, the NSA was able to identify an extremist in Yemen who was in touch with Khalid Kwasane in Kansas City, Missouri. Khalid? Kwasani. Khalid, probably, yeah, uh, Kwasani. Enabling authorities to identify co-conspirators and thwart a plot to bomb the New York Stock Exchange. Kwasani pleaded guilty in May 2010 in federal court in Missouri to charges of conspiracy to provide material support to a terrorist organization. Bank fraud, money laundering, 
Joyce said the arrest was made possible by the internet surveillance program disclosed by Snowden. Joyce also said a terrorist financier in San Diego was identified and arrested in October 2007 because a phone record provided by the NSA. So the spy that Americans is working, they say, without any proof. Just believe us. Don't question us. Believe us. Believe us? Yeah. It's like uh, the Twilight Zone episode when they said uh, the state has determined you obsolete, Burgess Meredith. You are obsolete, my friend. Because we decided that you are obsolete. Not that you are obsolete, but the state has determined that you are. Declared that you are obsolete. First, it's weapons.